Hi, welcome to our wilsonlyling.com, our ministry equipping website. This is our podcast on leadership. Well, today I want to talk about the fiery furnace of leadership. You know, part of the journey of leadership will always involve facing criticisms, resistance, maybe even opposition. The leader has to tackle the obstacles, the problems, and even crises that could happen. And so all of this can really put the leader under huge stress and it can feel like a fiery furnace. And so what can happen? What can happen when the leaders are placed in such fiery furnaces? Well, a few things can happen. Firstly, a leader can get burnt. Uh, now, I do not have to prophesy uh, because this is going to happen. So any leader who is genuinely leading will get burnt. Make no mistake about that. Uh, in fact, I would say that generally, the more influential the leader, the greater the furnace. Why is this so? <clears throat> well, with the same steps that we take on leadership, in that same action, we also begin to paint a large target on our back. You see, there is the devil. He is our chief enemy and he will delegate his minions to undermine us. Uh, the higher our level of spiritual authority or influence, uh, the greater the rank or the power that's set to oppose us. So fiery arrows are really the order of the day and we see it in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 and it goes like this. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the fiery of the evil one. Now, since all leaders are only human, we will make mistakes. Uh, and this will be compounded by our weaknesses, our inadequacies, and so forth. And so think about this. The greater our role, potentially the greater the impact of our mistakes. The thus, potentially the greater the furnace that we're going to face. You know, during the early days of our church, we were faced with buying some uh, musical equipment costing a few hundred dollars. Uh, if we made a bad choice, only a few hundred dollars were at stake. But over the years, as our church grew substantially, uh, we had to purchase property and build church facilities. So we are now confronted with million dollar decisions. So the magnitude of the decision making has increased vastly. And, and really, when I was a young church planter, any, any bad decisions I made would just have a small impact upon a couple of dozen of people. But today, as a HIM president, any bad decisions that I make could potentially impact thousands of church members. So, the question of whether we are going to get burnt badly is, is not the, the main question, but more how much are we going to get burnt? How badly are we going to get burnt? And at this point, it is so important to realize that uh, the harder the furnace gets does not necessarily correlate with how much more we're going to get burnt. Nor does it necessarily mean that the heat of the furnace will damage us. Instead, it may actually do us good. Wow. So let's just look at firstly at the fact that the furnace can burn us. You know, if you put paper in a furnace, it will very quickly burn to crisps. Put wood in a furnace and it takes a bit longer to burn. Put in steel and it does not burn unless the furnace gets very much hotter. So part of the answer lies in how resistant we are to the heat. Some leaders, they may turn to ash easily. Uh, they may be easily offended. They crumble emotionally when the uh, uh, pressure mounts. They get overwhelmed and they struggle to function effectively. Some others may come forth with just varying degrees of burn marks. Uh, some leaders, they may be able to cope with greater pressure and stress. Some can even survive really harsh conditions. So the resilience of a leader is a major factor 
how well we cope. So how tough are you to handle the pressures of leadership emotionally, mentally, spiritually, perhaps even physically? And can you uh, even bounce back up quickly? So part of the critical growth of a leader is really to grow in resilience. Then we can have longevity in leadership. Now, the furnace can also refine. You see, while furnaces can burn, it can also refine us. And scriptures actually speak about a refining of our faith. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, This have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which uh, perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Wow. So, I take the attitude that I do not simply wish to be burned. In fact, I wish to be refined. And so, think about it. It is possible that the same furnace that burns us could also refine us. In other words, the same problem that could have hurt us can actually be turned around to grow us. Think about that. You know, many years ago, uh, I was given responsibility to lead uh, a whole group of pastors nationally. And in many ways, I was inexperienced. Uh, there were many issues stemming from strong personalities with different ideas. And, and the lack of pastoral care in those days were compounded uh, by the fact that and there were a number of leaders and churches which were facing some significant issues. So it was a rather challenging period as for me, I was also having young children. So I found that it took a lot of joy out of me. The joy that I was having in, in the thriving church that I was leading in, in Brisbane. And it could have burnt me badly. But I decided I was going to tough it out by the grace of God. Because I knew that God had put me in that role, in that position. And I also decided that I needed to, needed to learn the lessons. I, I needed to improve. I needed to grow. As a result, over the years, I learned and I matured a lot in my leadership. The furnace, it refines me because I approached it the right way. So the key, the key to turning the furnace from a burning experience to a refining experience is our attitude, our perspective. If our perspective is that of a victim, then we will tend to get offended, hurt, perhaps even bitter and disillusioned. But if our perspective is that of an overcomer, <clears throat> then we tend to steal ourselves for a fight and, and deal with the circumstances with everything we got. And we say we want to come on top of this situation as much as possible. And in all this, one of the most critical perspectives that we must have is that God is sovereign. He is in control. Despite the immensity of the situation that we may feel, they were in at that point in time. You know, there's a scripture that I do hold dear to my heart. And it comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And it says, We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him and who have been called according to His purposes. So when we trust that God allowed the furnace situation, then we will find comfort and hope. Comfort because God is with us. Hope, because God has a purpose behind it all to work for good and for our good. And it is the letter that provided me with the incentive to learn and to grow from that furnace experience. And so this can motivate us to have the perspective of a learner, to take the effort to say, yes, I want to learn, and that we can learn from our mistakes. Uh, we can learn why and how it occurred. The, the, look at the situation. Uh, how is it it developed to that point of challenge or crisis? And the solution, if we found one or at least game out the possible solutions for future reference. You know, I often ask myself, what lessons can I learn from each of these tough situations? Lessons that relate perhaps with my heart whether it be a character weakness or some attitude that needs to be improved uh, as God's servant. 
lessons in relation to my competence, uh, whether it be skills or the way I implemented things, lessons spiritually, wh whether there were some spiritual elements in, uh, that I needed to be aware of in the situation and um, learning how to handle those better spiritually. So when we learn and when we grow as a leader, then the heat of the furnace has really served to refine us. Let me just talk about a bit about rising from the ashes. Now, at times it may feel like the furnace has just burned us to crips. Uh, but yet not all is lost because God is a God of resurrections. Think about that. God can help us rise up from the ashes. In the Bible, it gives us a story about David. David and his men were one, at one time away from the camp in Ziklag. And while they were away, the Amalekites attacked their camp and stole the, all their property and goods, including their women and children. And when David's men, they came back and discovered what had happened, they were so distraught, they were so angry, that they actually took out their anger against David. And the Bible said for us in 1 Samuel, in chapter 30, verse 6, it says, David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Wow. And each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. So just imagine uh, if you had your own men and who had trusted you for years and suddenly they just turn against you. Wow. How painful it must have been for David. And in, in David's case, it, it was even life-threatening. That was how bad the situation had become. David had been burned to ashes in his leadership. Yet we discover David rose from the ashes. How did he do so? Well, the scripture went on to say that David found strength in the Lord his God. So just a few quick tips uh, how we can rise from the ashes. The first one is this. The key really, like the, what David did, turn to God and find strength in God. You see, bring, bring our disappointments, bring our disillusionments to God. Bring our hurts to Him to heal. Let God change our perspectives and, and help us to perhaps forgive and release the wounds in our hearts. The second thing we can do is to go to God to ask Him to provide us inner strength, new strength, to rise above the pain and the pressure of the situation. Ask God for fresh, fresh new motivations, fresh purpose to grab our hearts again. In the case of David, he rose up. He rose up with a new determination to recapture all the goods, women, and children back from the Amalekites, which when you read the story in 1 Samuel chapter 30, by the grace of God, they did. They recovered everything. Isn't that incredible? The third thing we could also do is it's always helpful to have leaders that we can talk to, leaders that we can seek advice or prayer from. And, you know, their experience, their wisdom can truly be a great comfort to us and a great help to us at the same time. Now, let me share a little bit how we can be better prepared to face the furnace. There is a Boy Scout motto, and it says this very simply, be prepared. And the essential idea is that the scout must prepare himself by prior thinking out and practicing uh, so that they know what to do in case there's an accident or some emergency so that this Boy Scout is never really taken by surprise. In the same way as leaders, we ought to take the same approach. We can be better prepared if we take some of these following steps. Firstly, recognize that all leadership will have furnace experiences. Rather than moan and complain about it, we should prepare our mindset so that we will be ready to face it and to be refined by it. You know, years ago, many years ago, I started praying to God. I said, God, help me stay in the fire. 
and not jump out of it, but instead remain in order that I may refine as you intended me to be. And, and, and I prayed that and I've learned how to do that. And it's helped me so much. Secondly, begin to think through a number of key scenarios that perhaps we might face in our particular context and responsibility that could be a furnace experience. Think about how we can begin to approach it in a more biblical, a more godly way. Because when you think about it, there are many frontline professionals today. You may have emergency uh, room doctors, nurses, paramedics, uh, firefighters, or soldiers, and so on. And they all go through a lot of intense training. Why do they do that? To prepare them for those intense emergencies and scenarios. So that when it happens, they have already worked out what they need to do, what their role ought to be. And this helps them to function under really intense situations. That could help us as well. Another thing we could do, thirdly, is read about, learn about crisis leadership. Read some good books, attend some good seminars. This will give us some insights, some frameworks, so that we can begin to approach those intense times. And lastly, it always helps to have a good supportive team around us so that we can bear that furnace experience together. And when you have a supportive team, it can really begin to spread the load, spread the load so the most intense times can be uh, lowered in its intensity for us personally. And so the, the group begins to take more of the brunt of the load. So let me just conclude my sharing today. Leaders, we will face the fiery furnace. But we need not get burnt to ashes. But if we are properly prepared and we have the right mindset, we could in fact benefit from the furnace in, and instead be refined. That is the kind of leadership we should all aspire to be. May God bless you.